Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather, for those of you who are new, and today's video is gonna be all about the curriculum that we use in our homeschool routine. So grab your coffee because this is gonna be a little bit of a longer video, but I really wanna give you guys a true detailed explanation of each book and how we use it in our everyday homeschool. Okay, so I am homeschooling a pre-K year, a second grader, and a fourth grader. And I also want to mention that I do only focus on the important core subjects. So those would be um, math, spelling, English, phonics, reading, and handwriting. For me, those are the subjects that we do in school. And of course, we have extracurricular activities that are not um, always from Seton that I incorporate throughout the year, but that is what I have from Seton, so that is what we're gonna be reviewing. Okay, so starting with my youngest. So this is the handwriting for kindergarten. Um, I didn't see a pre-K, you have to excuse my nails, I just realized how awful they look. But anyway, they kind of blend in with this book, so maybe it's not that noticeable. But this is the handwriting for K for kindergarten. I didn't see a pre-K handwriting book, but it really doesn't get any simpler than what the kindergartner book is. So I don't think that that's a big deal, but this is what the front looks like. And this is what the back looks like. Um, you'll notice that in their books, they have beautiful artwork, which I love. Um, and I actually take out their artwork and I keep it and um, actually laminate it because I think it's that beautiful. But in the beginning of this book, and I've already ripped a few pages out for those of you who don't know, I do the binder system. And so I've already ripped a few pages out, but in the first lesson they had um, just simple uh, horizontal, vertical lines, slants, and that is how it started. Um, and in the second lesson, it's starting to get into, um, again, a few simple things, like this is the letter T, and um, and then you can incorporate the sounds and the words, and that is gonna be our next week's lesson. And then capitals, again, here's another picture. I love how they have the animals for each letter that it starts with. And then you can go through some of the sight words that start with that letter here, or maybe in this case ends with that letter. And here's another page, another example. So that is pretty much it for handwriting. Um, it's pretty simple and basic. But now let's go into what we're doing for his numbers. So this is the Counting with Numbers book. And I got this again for my pre k -er. And as you can see, we've already started. And so this is the very first lesson and we're doing number one. Um, it has an option to visually give them options to circle the, the amount of the, the number that you're working on. So here we circled one item. This is our number twos. And then we haven't done this page yet, but that is the next one. Let's see, it goes up to 10. But okay, so for here, for number six, you are doing number recognition and you're trying to find the number in common. So number one, you would circle each number, number two, and then all the way obviously to number six. And then again, circle the correct number that's in each box. So it's it's really focusing on writing the number, seeing the amount that the number is um, associated with, and then again, recognizing the number and counting and associating that number six is, you know, this is number six, this is the amount that number six is. And um, yeah, I mean, again, it's pretty basic and simple things when it's this little, but I love the detail. I love the different um, sections for writing the numbers, seeing the number, associating the number with the total amount and quantity of each um, picture. I think that that's really great. Here we have um, write in the missing number, which is again, helping them um, count and order and knowing and associating what number goes where in the, in the line of numbers. So I think that that's really great cut and paste missing numbers. So that is what this is. Oh, this is really pretty. The Jesus story of Jesus feeding the people and talking about numbers. Here's another cut and paste. So that is the counting with numbers book. Okay, so that was the counting with numbers. Let's see 
the next one. And I'm gonna try to do this a little bit quicker. So here on the first page, they are matching the phrases. So obviously he's only three and a half. So this is a little advanced. So I've actually put a pause on this um, for him because he's not ready to do this, but this is phrase recognition. And I could just verbally give it to him and say, okay, which one sounds familiar, but until he can associate sight words with what I'm saying, it's not gonna totally register. Um, but we will do this towards the end of the year. Um, what I love about these books is that it has the instructions at the very bottom, which is very helpful. There's not gonna be an answer key for this because it's simple, but I love how they have the instructions and the answers at the bottom of the page. It's very helpful. Um, so for this one, you're just circling which item would go up, 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 and they give you two options here and you're teaching them how to underline, which can be very difficult for a three and a half year old. So that is really nice. And um, we've done a few other pages. Again, word recognition. This was a little difficult for him. He's kind of getting it, but I'm gonna hold off on some of this and focus more on the pictures and what a bird might do, or in this instance, you know, for, for this one, it has a cake and a cat, and which one would which one would come to you if you said, come, come, come? And so that is a little bit easier for him to grasp right now at the age he's at. Um, so if you have a child who's maybe four or five, this would definitely be a little bit better for that age opposed to the age that I'm working with. But it has, it's it's basically gonna be the same thing. And um, they have pictures in the back to draw what item would go with what. And yeah, and so that is the pre-primer. Here we come. Again, better suited for a four or a five-year-old. Okay, but I like to start early and there's nothing wrong with that. If we see that we're going too far, then obviously as a homeschool mother, I could slow that down and fit in where I need to, the things that he is um, learning better. So this is the Do It Carefully book. This is really help, helping him focus on controlling the pencil and being careful and circling and tracing and putting X's and things like that. So when you open the book up, this is the page. And also something that you'll recognize in all of these books is that the pages are left um, blank for them to color. So I love that because after they focus and work on the pages, they can then go back and color. But here is the first page. It has a spot for their name. They can trace the alphabet and uh, numbers right here. Um, they have, again, the page to color. And so this is recognizing shapes and similar shapes and circling those to match. Here is a dot to dot to practice your handwriting. Um, this is, again, finding similarities and putting X's on the ones that are different. Another trace, uh, tracing. Um, and then as we go a little bit further, we have finding the same letters. So again, letter recognition. We have careful drawing here, tracing dot to dots. We have some cut and paste. But again, so you have writing straight lines and um, circle each pair so pairing the capital and the lowercase which is um, gonna help them associate obviously the differences between capital and lowercase you have more handwriting um, you have matching letters let's see let's skip down so here's another little cutout page and these two pages go together it's just a story on what you would find in the forest and what you would find in a stream um, Here's sounds that animals make and just associating the sounds that go with what. Here is um, size comparison so that you can help them recognize between a large and a small item. So yeah, that is the Do It Carefully book. It's teaching them again how to practice carefully cutting on the dotted line. And, um, and yeah, again, I love how it has handwriting. So if you wanted to do this and you didn't even want to buy a handwriting book that's totally doable as well. Something that I want to mention is that, oh look, here's, hold on, I'm getting sidetracked here, but here's a color by letter, or wait, yeah, I love that. I love these so much. I feel like this is so good for um, kids to do because it helps them to um, follow directions and it keeps them so busy and then they get to see the picture come to life My boys have always really loved these types of worksheets. So I'm glad that this is in here. So that's gonna be fun But what I was gonna say is what you could totally do is um, 
totally skip handwriting for this age because um, it's it's and I'll I'll talk about this in our um, I'll do a homeschool day in the life of what we do. But for my youngest, I actually have a wooden handwriting tablet, and I just have him trace with his finger on that. And I also it also came with like a little wooden pencil that he can trace um, as well. So at this age, handwriting is not really a big deal. Obviously, um, if you want to do it, you can, which is what we're doing. But again, you can totally skip that. Here's another little book that I got. This is just a coloring book and it's just Confession and Communion. They sell these little coloring books for like $1.95, I believe. But um, he loves scribbling. <laughs> we're learning, we're practicing our coloring, but he loves doing his handwriting. I mean, not handwriting, coloring. So, and I love how um, beautiful, obviously, it's about confession and communion. So all of the pictures are going to be geared towards that, which I really love. But some coloring books, they have a bunch of them, which is so nice to have. And that's it. That's what I got for my pre k -er. Um, Again, he's not going to be able to focus on a ton. So I try to keep it really simple and not overwhelm him with a bunch of um, different options. So let's jump now into my second grader and what we're doing there. Okay, so this is the Phonics One Part Two. So last year we did the Phonics One Part One, and this is the second one. So we could have finished this last year, but I, my second grader now is a year ahead. So I didn't want to rush him on his phonics. And for those of you who do not know, phonics is obviously related to reading and um, sounds uh, associated with words and letters. So I didn't want to rush him. I also paired the phonics book from Seton with the um, teacher kids how to read in 100 easy lessons and I can show that in another video and talk about that and how I helped my second grader and my fourth grader learn how to read and how I plan on doing that with my kindergartner as well but for now let's just focus on this phonics book so this is the phonics one for um, young Catholics obviously again they have a beautiful picture on the front and a beautiful picture on the back and I love how it um it doesn't have it here but I love how in the pictures it has um what that picture is, where it was taken, and I think that that's great. But okay, so jumping into the phonics, you have um, this page, which we've already done. So they're having them fill in the letters, which is showing them sight words and teaching them sight words. And then you have the picture that is associated with the word. And then you go back and it gives you the instructions here at the top. It's going to go back and tell you, say this word out loud, hear the sound associated with the picture. And that is what that sound um, sounds like I love that this gives a um, detailed look and helps them to associate it with a picture this is a, um, a rhyming page so they have the words here and then you would circle the words on the left side of the ones that rhyme they have a fill in the blank here where you would choose the word that goes in the correct or you would choose the correct word that goes into the sentence so on this page, it is talking about consonant sounds and um, where you would maybe hear that in the middle of a word. So for example, this one is words that blend together and um, they would have you just write the consonant that blends with that word. This is what I was gonna show you guys. This St. Vincent de Paul picture. That's just so beautiful. And like I said, I like to rip these out and um, laminate them. And this book actually is not a easy rip out. So I can't rip this out as easily as the other books. But for instance, like the handwriting for Seton is a easy rip out. You can rip those pages out. So some of the books, if you want to know, keep that in mind that they don't rip out as easily as the others. So let's move on. So that was phonics and obviously you get the idea, it just kind of repeats the same things, getting a little bit more, um, not difficult, but a little more challenging uh, towards the end of the book. So this is handwriting for second grade. And last year's handwriting for him was handwriting one. And it did start to um, have cursive towards the very end, just kind of introducing cursive. And then um, in this book, it's gonna be more cursive trying to really get them to uh, perfect that. So in the very beginning of this handwriting book, you're going to have, oh wow, a lot of beautiful. So we've only done school for a week and I did flip through this a little bit, but I haven't really detailed, flip, I haven't gone through it as much as I should, but I didn't notice all the beautiful art. Again, Seton is just giving us all this beautiful art that you can totally cut out and laminate and do so many crafts and projects with. So here 
uh, are the first few pages. I think that this is just beautiful. Look at that. So cool. So there are a few pages here of the handwriting art. And then we get right into the um, letter. So again, we've already ripped out a few because we've had, um, a, we, because we have done a week of school, but it gets into the letters. And I'm just gonna move some chunks here. Each letter, and then you get into the numbers. So one through nine. Um, let's see. Okay, and so then now we have a sentence, copy and trace and copy, and then they have to practice it underneath each sentence. Okay, and then I want to real quickly just talk about the sentences and the things that are in here. For example, just to give you an idea, the first sentence here says, our Lord made Peter Pope. So I love how Seton has made all of their content, all of their books about our faith. And that may not be appealing to some people. Maybe some people want something a little more simple like Jan ran up the hill or, you know, Tom and Brady or whatever played at the park. I really love that it focuses on the faith because this is um, so important to my family and I love that they're teaching them things that I wouldn't think to teach them and giving them a little bit of a history lesson as well. And we'll see that in our English book, how it goes through and uses stories of our faith as the main lesson, which I think is just great. But um, here's another one. It says, the blessed Virgin Mary is queen of heaven and earth. Her son is Jesus, the son of God, the father. And I love that again. And then again, it says there are three persons in one God, God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Love all of the um, faith based sentences. So um, as we get in the middle of the book and towards the end of the book, it has, um, I mentioned in the last book that we did cursive, but now it, it has it to where we are pairing the letters together. So it's practicing how you would do an I and a T here and put them, put them together. Um, and it just has, again, beautiful art. And as you get further, it's doing the same thing, pairing the letters together, showing you how you would write words in cursive. And then towards the end, you're going to get into actual um, full words. And then I would assume towards the end, we have sentences here in cursive. So yeah, so you're getting a little bit more uh, challenging towards the end. And then it has a full alphabet of each capital letter in cursive. So that is second grade handwriting. Moving on to spelling two. So in the spelling we have, and I'm just gonna show one lesson for time's sake. So this is uh, one of the lessons you have the the list words here, it has how you would use it in a phrase. It has a beautiful little story on, um, typically it's about a saint and they just use the word in this short story. They have the um, phonics part of it up here, how you would pronounce that word. And then in the first lesson, it is print the words in the spaces below. And then um, it has three worksheets per lesson. And the second one, it is put the words in alphabetical order. And then this one is print the list words that rhyme. So now you're printing the list words that rhyme. And that's one lesson in spelling too. And it's the same throughout the entire book. Again, um, getting a little more challenging towards the end with different um, things to do. Obviously the words get bigger, so it's a little more challenging, but that is it in a nutshell. Spelling too. Okay. So math two. So in the very beginning, it has a review of what math one would have been. And from where we left off, we were learning two digit numbers and um, place value. And so it picks right back up where we left off. Um, here is just the very beginning of it. So again, this is the front, this is the back. This is the page, this is page 13. So kind of like in the beginning, we are doing, um, place value and it's showing us how to add the tens and add the ones and putting it here and learning how to count out those. Um, circle the correct amount here. 
let's flip through towards the middle. We are also learning how to count money. So um, that is in here as well. And the other thing that I really love about this is that it has the little um, sections here at the top. So if you're thumbing through it, you can find, okay, so here's the number words. We're gonna learn how to write the number words. And then here's um, addition sentences and adding double zeros. So it's going and showing all that. And it's also doing um, the, so like here, for instance, four and nine equals 13, and then you would do swapping, right? So you would associate, okay, so it doesn't matter where the place is, nine can be in front or nine can be in back. As long as I'm adding those two numbers, it's gonna be the same. So like addition sentences and getting them to associate that it doesn't have to be in order to be the right answer. More of that, filling in the missing number. And let's see, counting money. It has time in here, which we learned a little bit in the math one. Um, and then it starts to get into double digit, blah, double digit adding and subtracting. And we have number sentences in here. We have figures drawing them on um, a, a grid like this and fractions towards the end or the middle, I should say learning fractions, we have more fractions, we have a review. So each lesson has a review after, which I really love because it kind of helps them kind of collect everything they've learned. Maybe you do it in a week or two and then they can do the review. So it kind of helps to give them a really nice review. And then we have measuring, we have adding money and place value of the, the dollar sign. And then towards the end, we are introducing multiplication. So this is on page 139, and it is starting with adding the um, 222, 333, three, three, and associating, okay, so now we have two, or we have three twos, and now we are showing them how to do that as a multiplication, which is really nice, and it has the pictures, so that's really good. Um, again, more um, introduction to multiplication, and then towards the end, we have uh, introducing how to add and subtract um, triple digit numbers. So you'll notice at the end of this book, we are starting to introduce word problems. And then at the very end of this book, we have subtracting thousands. So you will start with single digits in math two. And then by the end of this book, you will be subtracting four digit numbers. Okay. So this is the English two book. So we've already done a little bit of lesson one, but here is just an example for you guys, we are learning about asking, demanding, and um, telling sentences. So, oh, and exclaiming sentences. So it has um, a few different sections, different exercises in each lesson, and each lesson is about eight to 10 pages. And then you would have a ending review where you would learn how to, oh, and then you would have a chapter challenge. So here's chapter one. And again, it's just gonna review everything that you've learned in that previous lesson. And, and then you would move on to the second lesson. And on the very first page of each chapter, it's going to give you a syllabus of what you're gonna be doing in that chapter. So that is really great. So in this book, you are learning, let's just go to the beginning and I'll give you guys a so this is the contents page. I'm gonna just tell you um, what it's gonna be. So this is gonna be 11 chapters, and you're gonna be learning sentences, paragraphs, nouns, pronouns, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, sentence diagrams, library skills, word study, and letter writing. So that is what you're gonna be learning in English too, and it's structured just like how I showed you in the first chapter and the second chapter. It's structured the exact same way throughout the book. So this is English too. All right, so this is um, our arts book and obviously this is not part of the core subject so you don't have to do this, but um, I thought that the kids would really love this. They really love um, art. So it's teaching them a step-by-step -step of uh, drawing you know, a certain item or picture and that's one example there. Um, it has stories, so it has a art picture here and then a story on where that art picture came from and then it again has many step-by-step -step drawings and I also have the same thing for my fourth grader 
Um, so it's gonna be structured basically the same thing, a little more advanced for the fourth grader. Okay, so moving on to the fourth grader. Here is art four. Again, it's gonna be the same thing, a little bit more um, advanced. It has an actual lesson about the painting and how we're gonna do our, um, our lesson. And then it has the step-by-step -step drawing again, just like the second one did. So this one has, for lesson 11, for instance, it would have an, an objective and then the materials that you would need when you would do this and so on and so forth. It also has an activity. And so this is gonna be a really fun. And this is just focusing on the basics of art. And um, it has the, the color chart here, the color wheel. And um, again, just talking about the uh, different parts of this picture, for instance, the warmer colors and the cooler colors, and then talking about the color wheel in that instance as well. Um, and this is, again, the front has beautiful art, the back has beautiful art, and that is art four. All right, so handwriting. So I've already talked about how second grade and first grade touched on um, cursive handwriting, and it just gets more and more in depth as you go up. So my fourth grader is trying to perfect his handwriting. So in this, um, in this one we have this first page, which is going to show them posture and help them uh, realize how to sit properly in their chair so that they can write better and how to um, angle your handwriting book. So it starts with the downward cursive letters and then it goes over the capital ones and then it jumps right into um, the lesson so these are letters with loop strokes so practicing um the loops and then on this one it's going to be downward strokes so how you would go down when you do it and then this is again practicing and focusing just on the loops of the b and really trying to hone in and master the b strokes um, more words with strokes let's move on a little bit more now this is coming into the uppercase letters and then writing for practice. So these are list words, and it's just helping you to, um, again, perfect your um, your cursive letters as whole words. Now we have, okay, so now we have um, numbers, and again, it was showing previously how to list cursive words, and now we have it here. So they have numbers so that they can go back and learn how to write the list out and then again I really love this because it has them writing the seven sacraments so not only are they practicing handwriting they're also getting a lesson on our faith so obviously teaching our children the sacraments are very important so I love how it has it listed out here for them to know and then famous places in the holy land and they're gonna go and list that let's go a little bit further okay and Again, going through um, on this page, it has um, an actual verse from Proverbs. So that's really cool. Um, and again, just putting sentences together. And then on uh, towards the end, we have writing smaller and faster. So this is teaching them not only um, how to write in cursive, obviously, but writing smaller and not so large. So when they're learning, their, number, their letters are gonna be a little bit larger. It's gonna be easier for them to learn to write that way but then now we're honing in on how to write neatly and that's pretty much it for this book again uh it's handwriting so it's just focusing on how to perfect and master cursive so that is handwriting for english for this is the front this is the back it kind of gives you a quick uh, look on each back of the book. I should have mentioned that, but it gives um, a, qu a quick look of what you're going to be learning in this book. So for this one, it says sharpen sentence writing skills, develop the building blocks and qualities of a good paragraph, improve their ability to identify antonyms, synonyms, and homophones. So that is what we're going to be learning in English for. So when you open this book up, here's what it looks like. Let's see the first page. I'll go to the contents page and just give you guys, these books are really dense. So I'm just going to give you a really quick rundown of what the contents of this book, this book is. So you have the preface, the introduction, and what I really love in each book is that it gives you the um, preface and introduction of what you're going to be teaching them and how you can teach your student, your child, this, um, the contents of this book. So again, 
in all of the other books, it has the exact same thing, for, at least for the English and the math. It has a preface and an introduction so that you can be prepared to teach them what is in this book. So here we have 13 chapters. Here is what you're learning in this book. Capital letters, paragraphs, word study, nouns, pronouns, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, word usage, sentences, punctuations, library skills, and letter writing. So obviously it sounds familiar to the second English book, but again, it's just obviously gonna be a little more challenging. So let's go to a, let's go to the middle of the book and we'll just see what we have here. So for instance, this is synonyms. So you're, you're learning how to use synonyms and what they are. They have uh, different exercises, just like the book did previously, the second grade one. You have, this is chapter three, so you have your list of what you're gonna be learning in chapter three here, synonyms, antonyms, homophones, contractions, and then a review is given. So for the first one, in each row, circle the word that is a synonym of the word in the bold type. So they'll give a list of the words and then circle the ones that uh, go with that. Good morning. Okay, buddy. And um, again, it's just gonna be the same as the second one, getting more challenging towards the end and learning how to write um, compound subjects for sentences and perfecting their writing skills. And what I love about this, again, um, is the review that it gives towards the end of the lesson so that you can make sure that your student is mastering that lesson and truly understanding it. So that is English 4, and we are on our last, oh, I'm lying, we're not, we have two more, we have math and spelling. But here is the math 4, um, again, beautiful artwork on the front, on the back, and it gives a little bit of a brief understanding of this, of this book continues to develop understanding and mastery of the four operations, develops proficiency with fractions and decimals, includes prime numbers, prime fra factorization, number sentences, and geometry. So that is the content of this. Let's see, so last year we were um, really mastering our, um, our multiplication, and this is the table of contents, and let's see, I think that this has it back. So obviously this is gonna be a little more um, dense a little more dense than the other ones because it's math and it has one two three four five pages of content so i'm not going to list all that off for you guys but i will give you an idea of what the beginning is in the middle and then the end so in the beginning we're going to review um place value hundreds thousands tens and ones millions exp expanded notions rounding numbers roman numerals that's the beginning and then towards the middle we have order of operation, property of multiplication, missing factors, problem solving. Okay, let's go down a little bit more. Division, so we're gonna learn division, the rules and the remainders, really honing in on the remainders and, um, and, what, and what that is. Um, place value and division, division with larger numbers, dividing money, averages, let's see, skip, skip, skip. Mixed numbers and improper fractions, um, skills maintenance, problem solving, and towards the very end, they're going to be learning area, problem solving, fraction review, um, decimals, adding, subtracting decimals, and multiplying decimals. And so that is what is in this book. But it, just to give you a look in the inside, this is the page that we are currently on, page 13, and we are writing the words for each period. So it's teaching them the place value of the word. So they would have to take this number, for instance, which is 974,798,123, and they would have to break it into the section millions, thousands, ones. And this is um, obviously practicing handwriting. It's also teaching them place value. They would write this out in word form, which is expanded notion. So that's really great, and then it has for instance, the um, lesson, this is what we're gonna be doing next, which is gonna be rounding numbers. So I love how detailed these lessons are. It goes through and gives you got, gives you a, um, a lesson on how to do it, a step-by-step, -step. and then it gives an example, and then it gives them a practice, and then you can go through again. These are going to be a few pages. This one is two pages um, for the lesson, and then it'll have um, an exercise on the next page, and then it jumps into the next lesson. And here we're gonna be learning Roman numerals. And let's 
see. I believe each lesson is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that one was 11 pages, but I think it's because it gave such a short review to this lesson. And that was the review, and then this is the other one. So each lesson is about five to 10 pages long, and that is math. I'll give you guys another little sneak peek. I'll go into the middle. So here we're multiplying money, and that is what it looks like. It has the, um, this is the review, but it has the lesson on how to do that. And then um, obviously it has the actual exercise. And then towards the end of this book, let's see. There's another example of a lesson, problem solving. It gives you the formula, read, think, plan, execute. Okay, and then towards the end, it has exercises to review. And um, again, it's just gonna give you a review after each lesson. And that's what we have in the back. And then that's it, that's math. That's four. All right, so moving on to our very last book here, and this is Spelling Four. So again, similar to all the others, you have um, a front cover page, and then you have your contents page here. And um, in this one, there are 36 lessons. Hi. So my three-year-old is awake now, so you will hear him in the background, but you're gonna have a lesson similar to Spelling Two. You're going to have, um, but this one obviously is a little more challenging, but you're gonna have the list words here, and then we're gonna show how to use them um, in the different sounds that the, each letter makes that's in the list word. And then on the second part, you're gonna be using it in a sentence. And then here on the second page, you're going to be reading the, um, the vocab of the word and putting the word that goes correctly in the definition here on this side. Um, and then you have a fill in the blank here on this side. So again, with the spelling, the English and the math, they all come with answer keys. So that's great to reference back to. I do know that Seton has um, a thing that you can, you can do to really be guided through all of their books but I don't feel like I need that right now um, at these grades, but that is an option and you can have someone that would work with you to kind of help uh, walk you through each subject. But again, I just like to follow, I just like to follow the answer key. It's very simple and easy for me. Um, so uh, it's sectioned into A, B, C, and D per, per section of the lesson. And on D here, we have a story and it's gonna go and tell you a story and then it's gonna give you a, um, a, a lesson on what you should do in the story. And for instance, just to give you guys an example, it says, read the following story, paying attention to the underlined words. Notice how they use the spelling rule to the right. So then it's gonna tell you what you've just learned and how you would do that in a paragraph. Um, okay, so this is basically going to be the exact same throughout the entire book. Um, I love, again, the story and the beautiful art that's in it. Um, towards the end, here's the middle. Lesson 16, the Psalms, beautiful. I love how our faith is incorporated in all of these books. It's really wonderful. And um, towards the end of the quarter, so I forgot to mention this in the other spelling book, but towards the end of each quarter of these books, um, the lessons, it has a review, a lesson review, and then it shows you how you would structure that lesson and how you would um, you know, practice and review each word. I, what I really like to do, let's just finish showing you this before I go off in a, in a tangent and start talking about stuff, but again, this is the same throughout with different, um, um, different, sections uh, per each lesson. Beautiful, love it. <laughs> and then there's the end of it in the review lesson. So what I really like to do for spelling is I like to review it myself and I would give them a verbal quiz where I have them spell out loud each word as I say them. And then I would give them a written spelling test where I have them e either write it on our marker board or I write it or I have them write it on paper and that would be our test. And then before moving on to the next quarter of our lessons, um, we would do that. So that's an idea that you can do. So all of this is very good to have, but also make your own spin on it to really help you and to incorporate different things to kind of make it fun and exciting for your kids. Um, 
But yeah, that is it, you guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this review of, of Seton. We really love Seton. We've used Seton for four years now, and um, I've never had an issue with any of their books, understanding it, or trying to incorporate it and in, in teach my children uh, their subjects. They're very easy to follow along with. They're affordable, in my opinion, and I really love the options that they provide. So I hope you guys found this book. <laughs> I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share this video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you here. We talk about homeschool, cloth diapering, homemaking, and also on every Thursday, my husband and I do a video about our faith. Um, that is the main focus and the main reason we do this channel. So um, again, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, God bless.